Spider rings, spider rings, you can do so many things. Spider rings and bat rings, learning and playful things. Hooray, hooray for spider rings. So thank you for joining me today. Um, I've got all sorts of activities that you can do with little plastic spider rings and bat rings. Why? Well, they're inexpensive and they're plentiful and you can find them at any dollar store or big box store. And you know what? The kids like them. So I'm using bats and spiders today. There were also some skeleton heads in my bag, and I'm not going to use those. Um, some people who object to Halloween um, object to those things, and I try to keep everybody happy. So spiders and bats are real. They're fairly safe to deal with, and we can tie in so many science concepts with spiders and bats. Um, but the activities I'm doing today can be adapted to the little erasers that you get at the dollar store on Valentine's Day. Uh, they can be adapted to so many of the little toys and things that you find um, at the dollar store or party favor. So think about how you could adapt these for different holidays. Now, just to get started, um, I cut the, the back off the rings because they're a little less bulky. I just took my scissors and, and cut the back off, and they're a little bit easier to manipulate and deal with if you have them like that. So I've got math, I've got science, I've got arts and crafts, I've got cooking, let's get started. So um, one thing that you can do with the little bat and spider rings is have the children sort them, and then ask them their sorting rule, and you can you sort them another way. And um, for the younger children, just to make sets um, that you can uh, download a spider web um, off the internet and put different numbers on here or let them roll a die and then put that many spiders on the web. For um, some of your older children, you could use the spider web to do addition and subtraction problems. You could also give them a set number of bats and the picture of an old dead tree and like this one you could give them seven bats and how many different combinations can you make out of your seven bats and then um, you can also use the the bats and spiders for some patterning activities now for the younger children you could go ahead and draw the pattern and they could just simply put the objects on top matching by color and then extend it and then for the older children, they could make up their own pattern and then write it out or have their friends guess what pattern that they use for the bats. Um, one of my favorite games, and this is from Carolyn Koslowski. This is one she taught me. Um, it's called Fill the Cup. And so the children take a cup and um, they take a die or two dice if you want them to work on addition. And they do this with a partner or maybe three or four kids. And they roll the die and then they take that number of objects and put it in the cup. And you see who can fill their cup first, fill the cup. And then if you've got more time, you can keep rolling the die and see who can empty their cup first. But Carolyn says it's a great game that her kids love. Another thing that you can do with this, you could do some estimation activity. So if you um, took like four, three, three or four or five cups and um, I would put letters on the cup and put different amounts in here and then the children have an answer sheet that says guess and check so they would take like cup number one they would guess how many things are in the cup and write their guess here and then they would count, dump them out and count them to confirm and write the right answer there and then they could even put an inequality sign in between did you guess greater than or less than or did you guess the equal amount so this could be used you know with primary grade children or you could use smaller number of objects with the younger children uh, another math activity that you can do is, um, so what is missing? So I just made a little bat cave, turned a bowl upside down and put a little uh, entrance in it. And I would lay out my bats and um, we would count how many bats we have. And then I would have the children hide your eyes because some of the bats are going to fly in the cave. Hide your eyes, no peeping. And I would 
take some of the bats and hide them in the cave. And then the children has, have to determine the number of bats that are hiding in the cave, and then they can uh, look and confirm their guess. So it's just a good way to do the missing add-in or, or different ways that you can make a number. Now, I've got some crafts to share with you. Um, weaving. And very few children actually get to weave anymore. But this is a weaving activity that even young children can do. It's really good for small motor. So you just cut slits in a paper plate, and then you give them a piece of yarn, and they weave in and out. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, another craft activity is to make a little spider. Now, this one is kind of a teacher activity. If you like to make stuff, you'll have fun making this spider. Um, you just staple uh, around both sides, two plates, two plates, staple the sides together, leaving an opening at the top and at the bottom. And then you can put on your eight legs and if you draw a little face on a puppet, you can stick it through the hole in the top and the bottom of the plate. And you have a little spider puppet. And I love puppets. Um, this, this would be a, a little too time consuming to do with the children. An easy puppet to do with the children is just to give them a piece of yarn with a spider attached to it. And they have their own little puppet that can go up and down. Um, cooking activities. Um, one of my favorite ones that we used to do is called spider soup. So I would tell them, we're going to have a spider soup. Oh, just wait till Friday. Um, a lot of you don't know the joy of cooking with children. We used to cook every Friday, and now they think that's a waste of time. And they don't realize that we're reading and doing math, and you can do follow-up at writing activities. There's so many things that go on with the cooking activities. But I would get an industrial size can of uh, chicken noodle soup and take the label off and write spider soup on it. And then I would take Raymond noodles and crunch them up and put them in a sack that said spider webs. And we'd get the crock pot and we'd pour the, the spider soup in the crock pot and we'd go, ooh, look at the spider legs, look at the spider meat. And then we'd pour the uh, noodles in and ooh, look at the spider webs and just heat it up in the crock pot and I'd just serve them just a little, you know, cup with spider soup and they love to eat it. That, that it was just, it's, it's, eating was a joyful, fun thing to do in my classroom. Uh, another cooking activity that you can do, and if you can't do these in your classroom, you know, if you're a mom or grandmother or scout leader or church person, you can do some of these there. Um, I've got healthy versions and junky versions. So the spider sandwich, you cut a circle out of a piece of bread, and I found big plastic cups work really well for that. And then they can spread peanut butter, they can spread Nutrella, they can spread cream cheese, anything on it, and then give them raisins for the eyes and maybe a little red candy or an M&M for the nose and then a mouth. Who but me put smiles, smiles on spider sandwiches. And then for the legs of the spider sandwich, um, you can use carrot sticks, you can use Cheetos, you can use pretzels, you can use whatever you want. The um, Spider cookie isn't quite as healthy, but this is just like a sugar cookie, and you tint the icing yellow, and they spread it on, and then they can use um, chocolate chips for the eyes and uh, M&M for the nose, and then the legs can be the little um, licorice twist um, that you pull apart, and you can, you can give your spider cookie some legs. Uh, another easy activity to tie in spiders um, is with Play-Doh, and then you just cut sections out of uh, pipe cleaners, and the children make their spider, and you, know, you talk about the spider's body has two sections to it, and then they can put the legs in their spider, and they can um, fix them funny, or you could even, you know, let them name their spider and then write a story about it. There's all sorts of extension activities. Um, if you've been to my workshops before, I always talk about my favorite professor, Wood Smithhurst at Emory University, he used to say, if you want to catch a rabbit, you have to have a rabbit trap. Well, this, these things are rabbit traps. They engage children, they're hands-on, they're active learning. All of the research says playful and challenging. Yes, 
We want to challenge children. We want to give them an opportunity to learn, but we have to remember they're little children and it needs to be playful and fun. Uh, writing activity, a spider's tail. And so they can just make a spider web on uh, the front of a paper plate and turn it over and write a story about a spider on the back. Of course, I have to sing you a spider song. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. But did you know that next door to the itsy bitsy spider lived the teensy weensy spider? The teensy Wincy spider went up the water spout. Down came the... You get the idea. The kids just love it. And then, then on the other side of the itsy busy spider lived the big fat spider. The big fat spider went up the water spout. You know, the more dramatic you are, the better that they like it. Uh, you can uh, do the spider dance, and that's where... Children stand next to a partner and they put their inside arm around their partner's waist and then they take that outside hand and they try to sing the itsy bitsy spider with their partner's hands. It is quite a challenge even for adults, but um, I, I just love challenges, you know? They do not always have to be great. Whatever they do in their interaction with their friends, it's fun. Um, the spider handshake. Everybody holds up four fingers and you intertwine your fingers with theirs. There's the spider handshake or the spider applause. And we just take the tips of all our fingers and do the spider applause. And that's a nice, quiet applause. Some other activities that I have to share with you about bats and spiders. Oh, I even have a riddle. What kind of bats fly around the school at night? Alphabets, alphabets. Okay, so um, I mentioned tying in science, and you know, how can we find out about spiders? You know, what what can we do? Ask them. Where do you go when you need to know? And they'll say the internet. That's one way we can find out. How else can we find out about spiders? Oh, we can go to the library and get a book. We can ask our mom and dad. We can ask our friends. Think of all the different ways that you can get information and visual graphics. Are great. So if you were studying about spiders, you could let them make a spider graph and write facts about spiders on the ends of the legs. Of course, you know about KWL. Uh, you could even do some phonological awareness for bats. Put at in the middle and then do a tic-tac-toe frame and they write different endings there. You could let the children do a survey. What do you like better, bats or spiders? And um, you could do a VIN and do compare and contrast for bats and birds. And um, a lot of people don't know this, but bats are the only mammals that can fly. Learned something new today, didn't you? A uh, few other things. Um, this is uh, just a plastic bottle, and I put some caro corn syrup that's clear corn syrup and i put a couple drops of yellow food color coloring and a drop of red food coloring and then i put some of the bats and spiders in here and the children can just turn it around it's just uh, that's you know even grown-ups love to hold this i put it out on the table and they'll just pick it up and play with it and watch them ooey gooey around um you could use this as a timing activity. Let's see if you can all be sitting quietly by the time the spiders drip down to the bottom, or you could hand it to a child who's showing the correct behavior. Um, you could also make one of these mystery bottles, can you find? And so I'll tell you where I got this idea. Several years ago, I was in a Mexican restaurant around Halloween and they had put these little Halloween things in the spice bottle on the table. And so here are all these, these grown-ups. I see a bat, I see a spider, I see a pumpkin and they're turning the bottle around. So this is just salt. And I put some, of course, bats and spiders in here, but then I also got a little package of um, erasers, just different uh, Halloween erasers. And I put 
my objects on the copy machine and made a color copy. So I've got a sheet, you could just use the real objects. And they take it and it's can you find, and they spin the bottle around and try to find the different items in the bottle. You could also use this for an oral language activity for the younger children. You take this and you pass it around and the first child says, I spy a spider. And then the second one says, I spy a and something else. Helps them learn to speak in a complete sentence. Um, for older children, have them add on each time. So, I spy a spider. I spy a spider and a bat. I spy a spider and a bat and a pumpkin. So, each person has to remember what the previous person said, add to it. You could also use this as a story starter um, for the older kids that they write a story about the objects that they see in the bottle, or they could make a list of all of the things that they see in the bottle. Well, my time's about up. I've been told to just keep this to 15 minutes. So I wanna thank you for joining me. Um, if you haven't checked out our October Happies, Carolyn Koslowski um, is my, my favorite person in the world. She just has such amazing ideas. And we've got this packet with 17 songs and over 100 pages of um, classroom management ideas and pretzies and um, videos and books children can make and finger plays and classroom uh, literacy math science all sorts of activities you can get the free preview if you go to drjean.org d-r-j-e-a-n.org um, you can also find all of these ideas on my blog drjeanandfriends.blogspot.com so thank you for joining me and I will end with just a little song about the five days of Halloween on the day of Halloween my monster gave to be a bat in an old dead tree. On the second day of Halloween, my monster gave to me two creepy spiders and a bat in an old dead tree. And that's just the beginning of a song that you'll find in our October Happy. So take care. God bless. Have a good night. And don't remember to just have some a little bit more fun in your classroom. Bye now.